to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Well, this is indeed another transmission from my underground lair in room 303 coming to you today to talk to you about culture versus race. We as black people have talked a lot about what we do for the culture, but most of the things that are denoted negatively to the black race come not necessarily out of black skin because black people are a part of a diaspora. Black people are all over the face of the earth coming from different cultures with black skin. So the issues that we're attributing to race are actually a reflection of black American culture. So when black Americans leave the United States, more often than not, we will be looked at for our nationality. And when I'm meeting a lot of other people of different races that are coming out of certain cultures, they will have more of a solidarity to their culture than they do to their race. I referenced in the last season about a vehement argument that I had with a Jamaican man who denounced blackness. And he was like, listen, you're trying to get me involved in something that is not my fight, not my argument, because I am Jamaican. I am from Jamaica. This is the pride that I have in my country, in the history and lineage of my country. We are not tied to your black problems, your black thoughts, your black struggles. And as I am looking for the solutions to our black problems, I feel that the abandonment of the black community, the black American community that was built in the 60s, in the 70s, that was built on black pride, yes, but cultural values that were tied into the community. You know, when we talk about black culture in reference to the 70s and the 60s, we're dealing with a whole total different mentality, values, norms of a people group than what we see in the 80s when crack comes into the community, what we see in the 90s with gangster rap and gang violence, and what we're starting to see today. There are a lot of Black men in particular that want to escape the trappings of being black by race without actually having to come in and reevaluate and reinvigorate black culture. It's very difficult to be a propagator of culture when your community is not intact. When we see people coming from Asian communities that have a certain amount of solidarity, it's because they have done the work of nation building. Without us doing the work of nation building, having a unified mentality about who we are as a people, we're always going to be subject to whatever the thoughts, feelings, uh, impressions that other people have of us as a race. And that, in my opinion, has been the greatest reason for the insecurity within Black people is because our Blackness has been a characteristic that has been defined for us by outside forces. This nigga here? That nigga there. Because we don't have a black nation wherewith to take pride in a black nation to draw resources from, to have solidarity with, 
our blackness is only reactionary. It only shows up when someone in our community has been done poorly. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to be in together. But on a daily basis, when we're asked to buy black, love black, live black, Oh, no, we're all in everybody else's community. We're wearing Asian. We're buying Hispanic. We're we're using everyone else's resources, paying our money, our wealth, because Black people do actually have access to a lot of wealth in this country when you look at it proportionately to other minority groups. I know they don't think they're minorities because, hey, Asians think they're white. Hispanics think they're white. That's the reason why we can't pull upon these other brown, yellow, green communities in order to have a basis for black power. But black power all by itself is enough to wield social, economic, political, legislative power if we were to put our energy and effort into the work of nation building. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. But we're taking the lazy way out. And depending on other people, other people groups who have the same culture, the same nation, the same solidarity that I'm speaking of, we're looking to those people groups in order to supply us with the things that we need and then wondering why we as black people are trying to escape the blackness through race alone. Even the foundational work of doing that nation building has to be there for us to be anything more than black. And those are my black thoughts on it. Until we do that work on that level, healing generational trauma, building community so that we can begin to propagate generational wealth forward into our black progeny we're going to continue to struggle with a black identity that's tied to nothing that's why it's so easy for us to give it away sell it away why it has no value to us even though it is black culture is very valuable (laughs) to everybody who is not black we're the only ones trying to shed black skin like a snake trying to crawl over a rock to take the old skin off but what's underneath that old skin new skin that's the same exact color so we are not having a racial problem as black people we are having a cultural problem and it's time for us to begin to have the conversations put the institutions in place to deal with the culture because the culture has always been the culprit. But until the next black episode, the next wireless episode of the Wireless Women, please, by all means, stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. Class is now good. With great power comes great responsibility.